They say we live in a world of fake news. I disagree. We actually live in a world of fake olds. Think about it, we see the same old story over and over in the media. You know the stories, they tell us the world is becoming worse off every day. They say that new conflicts are rising in each and every way, but if we were to step back and examine the facts, we would come to one conclusion, that our world in which we live in is actually improving. Despite all the very real problems that confront us today, I still see grounds for optimism. Everyone benefits from digital services. And prosperity is nothing less than the seedbed for peace. Thanks to trade and globalization, we have made huge progress in areas like poverty, infant mortality, hunger, crime, education, and disease reduction. And see, the smiles of millions of people around the globe are the proof. Now, that's not to say we don't have a long way to go, but can we please tell the truth? It is said that in a time of universal deceit, telling the truth is a revolutionary act. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I am standing here in front of you to do just that. And I do not mean to offend anyone in the room, but the strongest nation in the world is not the USA. It's not Russia, it's not found anywhere in Asia. The strongest nation has always been and will always be. Imagine nation. See, if we can imagine a better world together based not on our differences, but on the things that connect us and make us whole, that we can create a future that is much greater than any vision we could ever have alone. I emphasize the word together because as the African proverb states, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, you go together. You know, I learned something about the Belgian horse the other day. Did you know that one Belgian horse can pull 8,000 pounds by himself? But get this, two of them can pull 18,000 pounds. And if you, if you send them to training, I mean, really focus them on this singular endeavor, then they can pull 25,000 pounds together. Together, we can pull so much more. You know, as a, as a student of history, I study the decisive moments of mankind, the pivot points. There have been many pivotal points throughout history where we found ourselves at a crossroads, given the choice of going one way or another. Ladies and gentlemen, this world is at a pivot point. And we as individuals can continue business as usual, or together we can develop a rather unusual business. A business based on courage, character, and clarity. A business whose goals are free trade, peace, and prosperity. A business that does not focus on isolationism, but answers the global call. A business that builds bridges instead of walls. See, the truth is, there is no first or third world. There's one world in the universe. Uni meaning one verse, meaning song. We all have a part to play in this song. Some of us will pick to play first chair. Those who can lift the world up in ways that no one else can. That's you. See, we have many instruments in this ensemble, from violins to cellos to flutes to French horns. And when they solo, they all sound very clever. But ladies and gentlemen, an orchestra only happens when the instruments play together. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the founder of Bloomberg LP and Bloomberg Philanthropies, Michael R. Bloomberg. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Um, good stuff. That's it. That's it. 
Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Global Business Forum. We have an extraordinary group of government and business leaders from around the world, and I would like to have a special thanks to the international partners who helped bring it all together. Uh, their names are listed on the screens around you. Now, I couldn't agree more with the narrator of that opening video, Prince EA, and especially the story that he told about the Belgian horses. We can accomplish, accomplish so much more working together than apart, and there is no other week of the year when we have a better opportunity to do that than the UN General Assembly Week. UNGA Week brings world leaders together in one place to promote peace and tackle common challenges, and I'm honored to support that work as the Secretary General's Special Envoy for Climate Action. But the private sector also has an important role to play in many of the challenges that world leaders are here in New York to address. This forum is designed to give business leaders a seat at the table including on an issue where the UN doesn't have much formal role, and that is trade. And I want to thank all of you for making this event a priority during what I know is a very busy week for all of you. This forum grew out of a conference that Bloomberg Philanthropies hosted a few years ago with the Obama administration called the U.S. African Business Forum. That forum, like this one, included heads of states and leaders of major businesses, and it was so successful at spurring talk on trade and investment that we decided to make it a global event. And we're glad to have heads of state from six continents here today. And from my experience, government leaders want to engage in these kinds of discussions with CEOs more often than they get a chance to. The King of Jordan once reminded me of something that I told him. Countries with Bloomberg offices almost never go to war. I believe the reason is business is intertwined with these countries and gives them an incentive to work together. Now, Bloomberg didn't at that point have an office in Jordan, so maybe the king was just angling for our business, uh, but it worked because we then opened an office there. And behold, no war. Trade has made the world more peaceful and stable by connecting our nations and aligning our interests. But the benefits of trade have not been distributed as widely as we think they should be, and we must do more to address that. The challenge facing all nations is, how do we promote economic growth that is inclusive, sustainable, and fair, and that addresses people's real fears about the future? As you will hear a little later from my friend Tom Friedman, the New York Times columnist, say, quote, the best way to manage the ups and downs of trade is to strengthen your floors, not raise your walls or build ceilings. Now, I think he's absolutely right, and today's a chance to begin putting some of those floorboards down, because building floors requires leadership from both the public and private sectors. By working together, we can do more to reduce poverty and improve public health. We can do more to protect the environment and promote equal opportunity for women. We can do more to connect people with new skills to succeed in an economy that is being transformed by new technology. Later today, directly following the conclusion of the Global Business Forum, the One Planet Summit will take place right here in this room. This summit was created by President Emmanuel Macron of France as a way to accelerate our progress on climate change. Bloomberg Philanthropies has been glad to work with his team to bring it together, along with the UN Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez and World Bank President Jim Kim. So this is a day full of potential. Our success won't be measured at the end of it. It will be measured in the months and years to come, and I'm very optimistic about what that future holds if we work together and seize the opportunities before us. Now let me introduce our first speaker of the day, who we are so excited to have with us. She is guiding the UK through a critical moment in its history as it negotiates its relationship with the European Union, and she also has to deal with a contentious domestic political situation. It is an extremely tough job with many difficult questions to work through on the economy, security, immigration, and more. And the answers to those questions will have far-reaching implications, not just for the UK and Europe, but for the whole world. The UK, as you know, is one of the global's, global economy's largest engines and a key partner to countries around the world, and really, in some senses, the father of America. 
Our company just made a major investment in the future by constructing what we think is a game-changing European headquarters. And I know it's a crucial market for many others in this room. I think her being here is a reflection of the focus that she is putting on building strong economic alliances in con two countries around the world, and at a time when there are isolationist pressures on both sides of the Atlantic. So we really are fortunate to have this next speaker here today to share her thoughts on what's ahead, and I want to thank her for making time in her schedule to participate. Please welcome Prime Minister Theresa May.